All right, all right. Episode 51. A couple of technical glitches here and work issues, but we're getting there. 51 is off to a great start. My name is Eric Feeney, founder of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that need assistance after heartbreak or tragedy. I use this podcast, Feeney Talks with Friends, and I talk to wonderful people in the community that are doing great things. And today's guest does wonderful things in the comedy community. What's up, BJ? How you doing? I'm really looking forward to it. This is, epi- this is episode 51. It's a great number. Bernie Baseball. Bernie Williams. Burnaby Figueroa Williams. Yeah. All born right. 1960. <laughs> no, I don't know when he was born. Probably maybe. He plays a guitar. He does. Jazz. He's center fielder. Where's he from? Uh, either Puerto Rico or yeah. somewhere in the U.S. Anyway, so 51 to 51. Bernie, love Yankee fan. Big time. We have a quick little review of episode 50. This was huge. This I'm very excited about. You're following a live podcast. You're following probably the greatest thing in my life after getting married, having twins, winning tallest runner at Toad's Place at a 5K, (laughs) and then having a 50th podcast. So this was great. Playhouse and Park, a lot of people to thank. We're going to thank Dave at Direct Line Media. Dave had five cameras. Dang. He had a GoPro in the ceiling. He had Owen to the left, PJ to the right. He had a fixed one in the middle. He had someone on a, a gimbal. It was just amazing, uh, amazing night. And Direct Line doesn't mess around. Right? Direct Line Media is, is it right here on the back. I want to thank my guests, Ty, Scott, and Andy. They're awesome guys on and off the basketball court. I want to thank Laura Haskins. Laura Hoskins Graphics, oh boy, for this wonderful, wonderful brochure. You get your copy? Want, yeah. me, want me sign it for you? No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So Playhouse on Park, we sold 103 tickets. We raised $450 at the raffle. We had a great night. Doro had a huge spread of food. Weha Brewing and Roasting kicked two kegs. Maximum Beverage brought whiskey and wine, red and white. Arnold Photography took pictures. We had raffles. We had guests. Dennis House did a um, trivia uh, trivia game. We had Mike Golick in the building. We had uh, some really wonderful, wonderful people there. My mom, my sister, my my sister's kids, my niece and nephew, my two daughters, uh, my wife, my mother-in-law. And just friends from the JCC, coworkers. Again, I could shout out on and on, but 50 was huge. Uh, I'm gonna attach the link. So go back and watch it. If you missed it, it starts off, no spoilers, but it starts off great. And here we are, 51. You're killing it, man. Killing it. A lot of friends. You got a lot of friends. Used to have, when we first met, (laughs) not as many friends. Now you got a lot more. Got some friends. And my friends are great. And it's like the community stands behind our mission. We're helping children and families. Uh, It's hard not to support, it's hard just we're doing right we're building that community our being a good friend motto is a hit you know pick up trash that's not yours uh hold the door give a compliment you know who could argue with that like your shirt says be a good friend yeah excited about this so again thank you to our podcast uh they they are our sponsors here so we high roasting and brewing on 141 shield street they're closed on mondays and tuesdays but they let us tape so thank you cody at we high brewing and roasting thank you irene at donut crazy thank you tate at gastro park thank you to the keating family ryan michael maureen thank you to the fix iv aaron fox uh keating west hartford lock yuri and eric brown wonderful people are helping sponsor this podcast and they were definitely influential and very helpful on number 50. all right enough about number 50. Let's talk about our guest today, BJ Quagan. How you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. How you doing? Yeah, great. I'm very excited to have you on. Are you? Eh, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. We do have an exclusive. This is a first ever. At the end of this episode, stay tuned because there's an exclusive special feature between two kegs, comedy bit, between Feeney and BJ in the back, between two kegs, filmed here at Weeha Roasting and Brewing. 
It was fun. A couple weeks ago. It was funny. We had some good laughs. We did. So I'm excited. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a comment. But again, at the end of this episode, Between Two Kegs. Love it. What's your biggest takeaway from the Between Two Kegs? Um, I guess my biggest takeaway is uh, that you're not a very good host of <laughs> podcasts, bits, any sort of entertainment piece. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping you'll do a better job with this. Because uh, you know, I was a little disappointed. I thought I was great, but you know, you were kind of a bully. Oh yeah, yeah. Disclaimer: I was, I was trying to be funny, <laughs> not being the best friend, going against our mission and motto, trying to be funny. So yeah, thank you for clarifying. But you know what? That's like that's that's our relationship, though, right? That it's is. Kind of, it's a big brother, little brother really. Because I've known you for a long time now, almost twenty years. Has to be twenty years. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to be married 17 years in October. Yeah. You were at the wedding, right? I might have been. I can't even remember. I can't remember that far back. I think we had you washing dishes in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. I was working. <laughs> no, but you're a great family friend. You, um, my brother-in-law is your brother. So you're my brother-in-law's brother. I just so, say brother-in-law to make it easier. Like yeah. I'm telling people, I'm like, it's my brother-in-law. It is quicker and easier. And practically brother-in-law but ever since i met you uh every family party you're my dude to go to and chat with because i've i've never had a bad conversation and we always have laughs yeah so yeah, yeah. i look for you i'm like work. i'm like i don't want to talk about like what i do for work yeah. or whatever i'm like, I'm like oh, who am i going to talk to Let's scope out the scene here you know my wife i live with her uh you know father-in-law mother-in-law your dad's awesome too so the circle of you, your dad, and your sister, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brittany, love you. Um, no, wonderful person. Uh, yeah, and tell us a little bit what you do. Uh, I know you have a real job, but then you have a really passion project job. Look. Yeah, I have a real job, and, which is okay. Um, just working in insurance, but what I love to do is comedy. Um, I, I do mostly stand up now. Uh, which is way different than majority of my live like comedy performance experience has been at CT Improv in Hartford. Um, opened a theater downtown Hartford, CT Comedy Theater. I was one of the artistic directors there, one of the associate artistic directors, and you know created a lot of programming stuff. It's improv. It's um, making stuff up on the spot. They do short form, long form. They do sketch comedy. They do. Um, they used to have a fair amount of stand up once in a while now, but um, then I moved closer to the city uh, to try to do more stand up. So I'm not as involved there anymore, but they're all like some of my best friends and wonderful people. Highly recommend going there. If you're in the Hartford area, it's like, it's a great show every weekend. They got a family uh, show on mm -hmm. Sundays, which your daughters used to go to all the time. Oh, we loved it. I'm still trying to collaborate on a fundraiser, being a teacher, being in a nonprofit, helping children. I would fill that place up. Oh yeah. You made the connection and you know, I think that was prior to COVID. Yes. And now I think they're letting people back in on a Sunday show. So maybe make that connection again. Yeah, definitely. We would love to do a fundraiser event uh, at the, uh, cause it's hilarious. The kids love it. Uh, finish the sentence. Uh, they do the mannequin, like move the person and they make it funny. It's just a blast. My daughters loved it. And, you know, the kids feel like the lights that they're on stage. Yeah. It's an amazing and, the, and you know, and everyone's so patient and funny. Oh, they do one where they rip paper yep. and they tell a story and they got to pick up the paper. Oh, incorporate it in. Yep. I just thinking about this stuff makes me laugh. So it's so good. You put on a great wrestling. Yeah. Sketch show. Sketch show. Oh, still to this day. Hilarious. Because you're a big show. wrestling fan. Yes. Going on. And yeah. we, that's like half the stuff we talk about. It's just like old, old wrestlers. Yeah. You went into like a little like a mark and a heel and a, and a face. And I was like, that was cool. The terminology. You hit the terminology. And then you had like a tin. Someone got hit with this tin. Perfect tin hit. And then you got a slow motion video. It was Perfect like, video of it. Yeah. No, great time. Highly suggest. I put links to the CT comedy down on Hartford. Yeah. Great time. Great place. Um, yeah. Tell us more about stand up. So here we go. We do. A, we play a game. Storytelling game. Um, 
this is three keys sponsored by West Hartford Lock, three keys that make you a great comedian. What are, you know, three keys that make someone a great comedian? What are the three keys to being good in comedy? Ooh, all right. I think, I don't want to say time, but like experience, right? Like, because obviously you could, you could do it sort of 50%, you know, for years and not really progress, but it does, it takes a lot of work. It's like anything you want to get good. They say like what, 10,000 mastery hours or whatever. And you can't just keep doing the same things, right? You got to like try new things, reword things. Um, Gary Gallman had like a great tweet where he did like 35 tips or something like that. And they're like really detailed tips. It was this big tweet series and it got like bookmarked, shared everywhere. It was like incredible stuff, but it would be like, listen, so you got to record every set. I know this is, I'm not really saying a specific key right now, but yeah, like we record every set, listen back, write down every word you say, cut out all the ums, f- move words around, figure out, and you'll, you'll find things like hit, yeah. just saying them a different way or uh, carrying a different energy you know, even maybe start with a different bit before that and it, you know, it'd find a natural segue in there or a callback or something like that. So I would say like the biggest thing is like working real hard, which is like anything. But um, another key I would say like self-awareness, right? Like don't just, you know, listen to yourself. Like, you know, be aware. There's so many people who are like great writers, but maybe not great performers or just terrible writers and great performers. And it's because it's, they're just not, I feel like self-awareness is in any public speaking venture important. Yep. Something happens, you do something silly, don't just like gloss over, like address it, yep. right? Like uh, call it out. Like that was a big thing in improv would be like, call it out. If you, if you did something stupid, talk about it, like say it. So self-awareness two, three, for a key and, and being a good comedian. And I'm not a good comedian. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is how I've gotten to be okay. Um, oh. The hardest part is probably for success is probably like business, like the networking side. You gotta just ask for things because no one's gonna give you anything. So you just gotta ask. You gotta be like, can I get on this show or whatever? And you gotta do it, you gotta be completely okay with failure and getting rejected and hearing no it's 99 percent of the time it's no but sometimes it's yes and i'm terrible at that like i'm always like i don't want to bother anybody but that's like probably one of the biggest things in terms of success so self-awareness hard work and time and persistence and the last one being okay with failure and asking that is true when you say like word it different, you punch it up a different way, and that's pretty cool. Then you said, yes, yeah, segue and punch back, call back, call back. When you tie in, you know, another word or phrase or or a whole bit into what you're currently talking. about. Because I got a whole bit here. We're gonna work out. We're gonna do a think aloud. I worked on this for a couple of weeks, and I want to hear you critique it and give me some advice on punch back segue. I have segues in here, and I mention it. I think it's all right. I mean, it's obviously. Well, because we all give you crap, but you actually, I mean, well, obviously you're a very naturally funny guy. And I don't think sometimes it might not even come across like as well in in maybe like some of the more charity stuff because like you're trying to keep it super accessible, super family friendly, super PC. But you are like one of the funniest people I know. You make me laugh, Uh, especially when you get a little edgy (laughs) growing up in Waterbury. um, True. True. uh, what I was going to say is you actually are a pretty good writer too, because I saw you do the, um, the storytelling thing Yeah, and you crushed it in storytelling and comedy similar they weave into each other a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think comedy is a little quicker. It, the laughs are more important. The content still has to be good. And some comedians are more storytellers rather than just jokes, you know, like someone like Bill Burr, like, he's like a master at sort of like making it seem like it's storytelling, but hammering the jokes in there. Um, 
but they do go hand in hand for sure. And then like Matt Dix gave me a couple of tips, like, you know, give things in three and have your last one, like be funnier. Yeah. Save that last one. That's Classic a, comedy punch rule. Up. Yeah. Like then, rules of threes. Um, the pause, you know, have them wait on your pause and then, you know, punch them with the, whatever the next, cause they're going to be waiting. They want the anticipation builds. Um, I struggle with the pauses too. Like, um, Sometimes like people will be laughing and I want to get to the yeah. next tag and I say it and they don't really hear it because they're laughing. And I'm like, I did that in the 50th laughing. podcast. I came out my intro and I'm like, oh, they're like cl- clapping for me. And I still went on. I should have waited at the clap. I was just happy to be there and get to it. And that's experience. That's just doing it. Yeah. You know, thousands of times. Part of me, Matt has talked about they have a drop in at CT comedy for anyone to do a comedy stand-up what's that called not drop an in. open mic open mic we, we haven't been doing that for a few years now oh. uh, but i actually started that but they it's it got got kind of problematic there because like anyone can come up and say anything so there were some some wild people <laughs> coming up there and saying some wild things and after a while someone left a a review like I, it, this wasn't made up at all and and someone and, and everyone's like all right now it's kind of like affecting yeah. Like, the, you know, the improv side of it. And it's like, that's what we're about. And like, so unless we can get it under control and, and we really couldn't, but. Yeah, it'd be tough to do. You can't. Comedy open mics can be like hell. Like it can be, you can just. Never thought of that. This can be terrible. But you also have to go if you're a comic because you got to put the work in. Yeah. But they're good to go. To, there's a bunch of Connecticut. You should still go and work on. Does Elbow Room have one? They used to. I don't know if they're still doing one. Yeah, I think they do actually. Maybe on Wednesdays. When did I just? I just not just like maybe in January or February. You did a. You were hosting. Yeah. Had me rolling. It was this. It was like the first time out. First time seeing comedy. You know, not first time out, but COVID kind of calmed down, and we we're in the basement of the Elbow Room, and you had like four, three or four acts, and they just all killed, and you and your introduction like set up, I knew I was like, this is gonna be a great night. Like, to the laugh where, you know, you're like catching your breath, maybe a little tear. And then I feel like a lot of guys always do what relates to them. You know, yeah. your mom, your father, your family. Uh, you know, if you're married, you got the husband. If you're a dad, you get you talk about your, your kids. Yeah, speak on what you know, speak huge on. thing. Yeah, you don't wanna be talking about like, like, other races or like religions or it's like it's a it feels yeah. a little weird right like if it's it's like you, you can't really say that because you don't know that <laughs> like true in my opinion at least and then we do another game this is storytelling game actually it's called first last best worst so your stand-up bit your routine or your events or your places that you have been what is the first time you've done stand-up the last time you did stand up, the best time you've done stand up, and the worst. Okay, first, actually, I, mean, I, I do remember, should remember that. That actually was when I started early on doing improv, maybe like a year in. They were all, there was a bunch of us that were like, we always kind of wanted to try stand up. So we like put on like improv people doing a stand up show, which, um, you know, when I go back, I think there was like a video and I, it's it's not good, but it was a good experience because it was a crazy adrenaline rush. Like, this is terrifying. Because um, at least with improv, it's like a little more scary because you don't know what's going to happen, but you know and trust the people you're with. You got other people there to support you. So we did that and it was just like a bunch of people, maybe like eight or nine people who just like ran a seven, five, seven minute set or something like that. And like, you know, a lot of the community came out so it was like a supportive audience and whatnot. And that was the first time. That was probably like 2014, maybe. Okay, so you've been in eight years-ish? Yeah, I didn't really start doing stand-up at least seriously until, I don't know, 2018, 2017-ish. But um, that's the first. The, was it the worst? Yep, first worst, best last. I can't think Anywhere. of one particular worst. There's been a lot of them. I think there's just most, like mostly worst. <laughs> um, oh man, I'm trying to think of one. There's definitely been somewhere like, like people aren't even listening. There are people where it's like bombing and on stage is like the ultimate low of all lows. Oh yeah, 
it's terrible. But there's there's like the half bomb, which is where it's like you just don't do well. People are kind of smiling and like that. I hate. I'd almost rather fully bomb where it's like people hate you. It's just a mess. It's <laughs> heckling you, not listening. Because at least then you're like that was like objectively a terrible experience. Because the other ones where you kind of half bomb people, are like well, it was okay. Like what's the big deal? And like so then you're just okay. It's that's almost worse. You'd rather be god awful. Yeah. Okay. Because at least that's like funny. True. In, in itself, performance art wise. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have like a real worst. Do you have a, got any examples or what made it the worst? One of them, what stands out as something that was the worst? Did you get a boo? Did you get a ooh or a get off the stage? I've never gotten like booed or heckled in like a real negative way. You well, had something at the elbow room. Were you going back and forth asking his occupation and hinting like if he was a cop and or he undercover was a cop? A cop? Yeah, 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 he said he like worked for the government. <laughs> yeah, and you were like, so. And every after every bit, you went back to the dude. So you're going to tell us your job? <laughs> and he's like, come on, man. Yeah, he actually. Um, and then he came, came up, up to you after. He's right. like, I'm actually like a, in the police academy or something. Like, I just graduated. <laughs> he's like, and I didn't really want to say because it's kind of like. And he's a rookie cop, too. He's a rookie cop, and it and it's like. You know, it can be kind of, it's just like a weird then everyone knows climate cop. too, of yeah. like climate. You know, like some people just like hate cops. It's like, I get it. I get not wanting to people to yeah. know that in a comedy club. <clears throat> I feel like one guy was a teacher and I was like, uh, any teachers out there? And I was like, uh, okay, no, uh, maybe I'll tell them. Maybe I won't. Right. If you just don't want to be part of it, I get that. I'll never, I would never bother someone who like really didn't want, you know, he was kind of like, okay with talking. He just didn't want to say that one piece of information. No, it was funny. So best, best, like you killed and like, you left like a hero. Oh. I've never done that either. <laughs> really never kill. <laughs> Come on. You've killed. I don't know if I can say that. Um, I mean, the most fun, I think set I ever had was my friend Laura was going away and we did a show for her and uh, there was like four comics and I just had a really good set recorded did, it. it was like a big Laura thing. was she the frying pan at the wrestling yes yes Laura uh M delivered the hit Laura yes. Manasowicz yes she's in LA now very funny still pursuing comedy yes no way yeah in LA yes nice the she's place great. to go She's great. And she was funny. That she was brought, awesome. She, that hit, like, it was so funny. Like, I watch it all the time. She was the one who so, delivered the hit. Did you have you a roast for her going away or a birthday party? Or is like, just a... It was just a show. And she, like, closed it out. She kind of, like, headlined it. And it was a packed room. And everyone just did super well. But I had, like, two newer bits at the time. And they, like, hit really hard. And so I was just, like, floating. But... Um, I didn't really, I kind of roasted her in the beginning. Not really a roast, just like talked about how she's like maybe my biggest bully in a way, like, but in like a real fun, innocent way. And that stuff did very well because it was like, it showed her personality. Like the joke, like one thing I was like, I, you know, she called me haircut for a year and a half just because one day I got a haircut and I happened to be in front of her. And she's like, oh, what's up, haircut? And like that was just for the longest time. And everyone was laughing because like that's such a Laura thing to do. Yeah. Your haircut. But that was like one of my favorites. So I would say that's a favorite. We could call it best for the purpose. And you're awesome. Format. Your um, best man speech at Sammy's wedding killed. Yeah, I mean, I left time. that one crying. I was... <laughs> I think there's on video, you hear me going, <laughs> he like awkwardly laughing. I'd like to watch that because it was a long time ago. It was way like well He taught before. you to catch by firing baseballs at you. I think I mentioned that in the uh, Between Two Kegs. Yeah. Stick around. I don't want to spoil it, actually. That's a real thing he did. And that's how his father taught <laughs> him. I was backing out. And he just was like, you know, backing out, scared of the ball, like super young. And he was just made me face like the garage. And he was just as hard as he could throw him baseball. Some of them would hit me, some wouldn't. And he's like, it doesn't hurt. He's like, just, so I would just hear like, or hit, get hit, you know. 
Um, yeah, that was that was an early taste. Maybe that was the first time, man. Right? I I always liked it. I did a couple best man speeches. You know, a couple, a couple. You've been you've been the best man for a few people. You know, my buddy Kramer. He had his pickup line. I I remembered saying too. He's like, yeah. I forgot what it was now. Nope. Darn it. Let's do pickup. Let's talk pickup lines. That's like a family friendly thing, right? Yeah. This is my thing I would do. My buddy Fish, one of my best friends, I would just, if I was with him, I would just like walk up to girls in college. That's, you know, where we met. Never really done it since. But I would just be like, this is my friend Steve. He is a two time cancer survivor. <laughs> Because right. it's true. The kid beat oh. leukemia twice. Okay. All so right. I was like, uh, and like, you know, who's going to walk away from that conversation? Mm. So that would just like be That's an a good open. one. You check the tag and like, what's your tag say? <laughs> Made in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, those I'm astral lost. pants? Yeah. I'm lost. Can I have directions to your house? <laughs> <laughs> These are good. Oh. Are those astro pants? You know that one? Because your butt is out of this world. Oh, yeah. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? <laughs> I, I pick up, uh, the idea of a pickup line is a, a gross thing to me, but it is a, it's funny when you're doing it I for funny I don't even know you sake. can do that these days without offending someone. And you have to, like, text them first. Well, it's so, like, it's so... <laughs> you got to text them. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a stupid thing now that it, it is almost like they they know you're just being like, silly. Uh, I would imagine. Lick your, lick your finger and put it in. You're like, hey, um, let me get you out of those wet clothes. I don't understand that. One no, at all. <laughs> I don't know. What that... No, that, I don't know that one. Just yeah, because then you got to touch someone without yeah, their they consent. Can't touch. Yeah, they I don't. Know. Touch. I don't think that's good. Or. Hmm. Anyway, comedy. All right, you want the best, worst, first, oh, you're still and doing the it. last. You have to yeah, do last it. time you just... This was supposed to be a quick segment. Uh, the last time, geez, I don't know. Because I had to take like pretty much two weeks off because mm. of COVID. I had to cancel a couple gigs, which is a bummer. Oh, before that, I was in New York at Broadway Comedy Club. It actually went really well. It was a good, good set. Broadway? Yeah. Comedy Club in New York. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. How many uh, comedians? There was kind of a lot in that show, probably like eight or something. How like that. many? How much did the um, attendees pay to get in? Too much. Really? Yeah. You could get a discount if you used my promo code Quag. Like thirty, get like five 40, bucks 50? off, like a twenty. It'd be like 20, 20 bucks instead of twenty five. But then you got to pay a two drink minimum. You got to get the drinks. I used to go to. <clears throat> I saw Paul Mooney. Oh man, rest I love in peace. Paul he, Mooney. he was phenomenal. It was right in Times Square. What was right in Times Square? Not Dangerfields. Dan- um, Car- no, Carolines. Carolines. Was it Carolines? Yes. Saw Paul Mooney. I saw Bill Bellamy. I saw. Oh man. Same night? Uh, nope, different night. I saw. Got a picture of Paul Mooney too, and Bill Bellamy actually. Uh, Both heavyweights. Killed. So good. And that. I think it was a, Paul Mooney was around Chappelle time too, so Chappelle was like, still is one of my idols. Was he like he was like one of the main writers on that show, Paul Mooney? Yeah. Do uh, you mean Chappelle's Showtime or just like height of Dave Chappelle's like coming up? No, like that Steve? show, Chappelle yeah. Show, Chappelle yeah. Show, great sketch show. Oh my! One God. of the greatest sketch shows of all time. He's like, well, I mean, I guess there hasn't been that many, but SNL. Key and Peele and, and Chappelle show. I've been guilty pleasure now. Key and Peele, you know, I don't know they how. They put out some heat. Man. Facebook, you watch like a few, and next thing you know, they just feed them to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they notice that you're you watching watch longer yeah. on those. Yeah. Yeah. So then now I'm just, I feel like I've seen every episode now <laughs> because Facebook just feeds them to me. Do you ever see the Family Matters one where it's like, it's uh, <laughs> Carl Winslow coming into the producer's office and he's like, the show's all about Steve now. And then like all of a sudden, like the guy starts choking and stuff. It's like Steve doing like Darth Vader shit to him. Steve Urkel. 
Oh, no, I got to watch that one. I love that one. The, the baseball one where they're slapping butts. Yeah. And he's like, ah, I can't slap. He starts sweating. He like he had to go to rehab for slapping butts. Or something. <laughs> and he's like, I can't. Those were good ones. Just, just great. I mean, classic, the teacher one. Oh, yeah. A.A. A. Ron. The helicopter one where he's like the news media guy and he's freaking out. <laughs> Hmm. Of, we could just sit here and reminisce about the key and peel. All right, come on. All this talk, you got to hear my bit. Okay, let's do it. So, Feeney's going to share his bit. This is a new segment. Oh, and your dad just texted me, Owen. Number 50 is up. Number 50 is coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited. Your birthday? The 50th podcast, bro. No, yeah. Is that an old joke? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I see what you did there. So I'm old. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Who said 50 was old? 50. All right, so uh, we'll, t we'll, we'll, do a, we'll talk it through. Think out loud. Feeney's comedy bit. You leave a comment. Let me know if I should pursue this. BJ and Feeney are fishing. A genie comes down and grants a wish. Feeney wishes for the lake to be filled with Cody Street from Weeha Brewing and Roasting. BJ slaps me and goes, now I have to pee in the boat. Come on. I don't know if I understand. <laughs> is this, first of all, is this a, is this a sketch? Is I stole this, a... this one. I stole this joke and I changed it around. You didn't Did like you that? Did you miss the funny part when you <laughs> changed it around? <laughs> all right, so wait, let's break it down. Break it down because you got to think about this. Okay. One. So the lake is this now be beer. I'm slow. Yeah, right, right. So now. Oh, I can't pee out in the water. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to pee it's in the boat. Not good. Too no. much thought or just peeing is not funny or just. The lake being bare, not funny. When I first heard it, it was on St. Patrick's Day, two Irish guys, and he asked to change the lake to Guinness. Okay. Maybe that would have, I would have maybe caught So don't it. start with that. I think if you have an Irish accent, Ooh. it hits harder. You know? Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, any dads out there? Any husbands? <laughs> yes. yes. Here are some tips to be a hero with little to no effort. Just wash the towels. Just the towels. You know? You know why? One, they're easy to fold. Two, the loads, it loads and makes a full wash. Three, it looks like a lot. Four, maybe you throw in some socks and boxers. And God forbid you five a five, you five a five dollar bill or some change. Jackpot, lotto, casino, cha-ching, making money. <laughs> you think you might find a five dollar bill? In your socks, boxers, or a towel? <laughs> okay. All right. And you think $5 is enough to go to the casino? <laughs> you can't even get there on a, you can't even get a gallon of gas. <laughs> Maybe throw in some socks and boxers. Check the segue now. You know, New York Giant socks. Come on, guys. What's your favorite team? Do we have enough stuff with their logos and names on it? I mean, umbrellas, cornhole boards, hats, welcome mats, cat collars, mouse pads, license plate holders, boxers, boxers, come on guys. We don't play on the team either. We should never say us and we, bunch of fake sports fanatics. I mean, I agree with that. I do think it's just a, more of a rant. Rant, that was a rant. Than a joke. Okay, um, advice. Also, there's more Friends with Feeney merch than any sports affiliate. <laughs> I mean, you got like cup holders. You're good co point. You got coasters, stickers. Good point. Good point. Stickers. Some magnets. With a tattoo that, <laughs> that you paid them. <laughs> no, my friend Kathy Fagan, shout out co worker, she won the raffle to Shamrock Tattoo. $25 off a tattoo. I said, you got to get the be a good friend tat now. And she was like, probably, she was I'm like, probably not going to do that. That'd be a cool tat. How much you'd have to get paid to get that tatted? Do you have any tattoos? 30 bucks. <laughs> I, I don't have any tattoos. Oh, come I'll on. get that tattoo if you pay for it. And I'll have to think of something fun. Maybe we'll let people decide. All right. Comment on what BJ has to do to get this tatted. We're going to work on some comments. And what you got to do. I'll do something too. I'll get that tattoo. I don't care. It's a good message. People should be a good friend. Good point. Good point. 
You heard it here first. We got our first <laughs> Be a Good Friend tattoo. <laughs> Episode I'll 51, baby. I'll do it. If We're we can over. get people to donate maybe a certain amount or something, Ooh, let's I'll raise. get a tattoo. Five Gs? And maybe they can pick where? 500? And how big? Five Gs. Get a little wheezy. Like If we can, if we can raise Post $45. Malone under the eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Post Malone. Let's do it. All right. We're putting in that $5,000. 100% we'll do it. It'll be my first tattoo. His first tattoo. And we'll do it at Sham. Is it Shamrock? We'll do it at Shamrock. Yeah. I like it. All right. You ever have a hiding spot so good? Like I just found Valentine's Day candies for my wife in my boxer drawer on St. Patrick's Day. I mean, money in a sock under the bed, coffee can of cash buried in the backyard. See the callback? See what I did there? I'm going boxers like boxers three times. Yeah, I don't know if that uh, <laughs> if anyone would make that connection. Because they have to laugh the first time, you know? Oh, they haven't laughed yet. They haven't laughed. So the connection's not made. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. It's got to right. be a real clear <laughs> This one's this one, I hope. So I'm 0 for 4 right now. Yeah. All right, 0 for 4. Let's, let's, let's mark these down. But I also X. think that you are better than this. It's a little, yeah, I'm reading. Yeah, you're better. I was standing up the delivery. You almost should go in no script. You might be at your best. Okay. That's a good point. I think so. I like this one. Okay. You ever cook with Hello Fresh? <laughs> Feels like, I mean, Hello. After, Hello Fresh. Hello. Maybe the delivery was bad. No, Hello no, Fresh. You're good. Hello Fresh. Feels like I should open up a restaurant. I mean, I couldn't cook to save my life. I could barely make peanut butter and jellies. Hello Fresh comes around. Now I'm Bobby Flay. It's like Ligos for cooking. There's step-by-step -step pictures with directions. I call my kids down to eat all proud, like it's Thanksgiving. You know, it's like a four-star restaurant, maybe three-star restaurant. No? no. That's the punchline? <laughs> I gotta work on the That's, punchlines. It, it, I got a lot of setups here. Everything you've done is, is all set up and too much of it. Okay. Right, you could edit that down to, to a half a sentence or one sentence. But then you gotta have, you know, the joke. You gotta have the flip. <laughs> so we're still missing jokes. Oh, for five. And here's the thing: I can't write jokes. Like I just go up there and I'm like, I'm weird, and people <laughs> laugh at that. But, but I can, I can tell someone they don't have a joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> How about solo stoves? You get a solo stove yet? Is that a real thing? Solo stove is like this new fire pit. It's metal. It sits up. You can have it on your patio, your deck. It's smokeless. That's scientifically where the smoke comes out. It's really cool. <laughs> but there's a new car warranty. Because now, if you notice, they text me every day. Final hours. Last chance to get a fire pit. New arrivals this weekend only. Last chance. 40% off. It's not Essential the last bundles. chance. <laughs> Solo stuff. Yukon flash sale. Few days only. Take $300 off. Last chance, 40% off. They keep saying last chance, but Flash I don't believe sale, them. 30% off lids. I mean, this is daily. This has already deleted a chain. So I was going to try to hammer on them. Set up again. Set up. It's set up. You know what? You could throw an analogy. Like, imagine someone, you know, has you at gunpoint being like, this is the last chance. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be. I don't know. I can't do it either. I can't write. Or what about these iPad, iPads and iPhones? Wait, hold on. Did you buy a solo stove? Yes. You did? Yeah. And, Amazing. and they're still trying to get you to buy another one. So, no, they want to get you the lid, the carrying case, the poker. And they're giving you limited t opportunities hats. to get them at a discounted rate. <laughs> so, let me tell you, the worst thing I ever did is donate to Mark Kelly's the senator in Arizona's campaign because I was like, all right, this guy was an astronaut. He's probably smart. They, I've like blocked every, they, they come at you with a different number. phone number. Oh, yeah. It's just like, this is Mark Kelly's wife. This is his cousin. <laughs> this is his brother. Like we, we need money now to stop this and that. And I'm like, oh my, like I gave you money one time because it was when you were running. I was like, you should be just being a senator now. Stop trying to raise money for things. I get texted once every two days i mean i'm i don't he might be doing a great job i don't know all right but we're gonna put that in there mark kelly even if he is 
put him in my solo stove bit? If, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is just a personal experience I've had with frustration like this. No, no, so no. People, it. It's in it's, the bit. It's good content because people can relate is what I'm saying. But you need to make it a joke. Yeah. I don't think putting Mark Kelly in there will help at all. <laughs> That's my own issue. But here's the thing. He could be a great, the greatest senator in the world. I will never give him a dollar again because of this harassment. You know what I mean? Like, that's the worst thing. Like, you know how many people you're turning off by, like, just peppering them, peppering them every day, so threatening stuff. them with last chances. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I got a text. Oh, it's solo stove again with my 45th last chance, <laughs> final hours. <laughs> For what? Like a what free you stand. Kill me it's a free stand, essential bundles, free stand. But they are amazing. My if they're essential, why didn't you put it in? When I bought it, give me it. My wife loves the solo stuff. Or right, Nicole, you know. Nicole. All right, so I'll get one. Then. All right, this is, <laughs> should I keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Let us know what you think in the comments. I'm going panhandlers. Have you seen them lately? Yeah. Are you seeing more and more in your town? No. It's a hot topic in West Hartford. And I'm all for pe helping people. I give when I can. But I like to check them out first. Quick scan of their appearance. I'm not giving a panhandler with a face tattoo. I'm not giving to them. Because it's obvious that they make bad decisions. <laughs> or worse yet. I'm not giving to a panhandler if they're wearing a Red Sox hat. <laughs> I mean, come on, scumbag. Yeah. Really? All uh, right. I think, a, I, I think see you, there? Got, you got something there. See it's, what I did there? You do. I don't know if I would be going at, uh, you know, homeless people, like, <laughs> uh, for my choice. Of, you yeah. Because it's like yeah. I'm in a better, like, <laughs> living situation or whatever. So they can try uh, to punch up, not down usually. Okay. But okay. Uh, but Red Sox fans are universally scumbag. Right, like everyone's right. in agreement yeah. on that. So That's you have funny. <laughs> All right, so better lead up. Damn, when I finally get a joke, a gag, a laugh, but I do. I'm not a, trying to offend people. That's no, I under, yeah, I understand that. And, but there are, there are people who, you know, ask for money. Like, that's just a thing that exists. And, and you, there is probably some kind of judgment process, right, that people are like, yes or no. Yeah. It's almost like how I'm feeling that day. Like where I'm just like, you know what? I'm having a good day. And yeah. I have, if I have something on me, like, cause I usually never have cash. I'll like usually give someone a couple of yep. bucks. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> I would probably be more open to giving a face tattoo a per <laughs> person some money than like, if you're wearing like nicer clothes than I am or true, you know what I mean? Or they're checking the phone. Yeah. It's like kind of what, or they what roll up. Is <laughs> <laughs> they roll in with an Ultima, park it on the road, walk over. Like is this your car? Oh, so you okay? Punching in. But Red Sox gear, you're out. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Right. I'll, I'll steal from you probably. <laughs> Even if you are hard on, hard on times or whatever. <laughs> on hard times. All right. Well, I, we'll edit all this out. Dudes leaving voicemails. Okay. Just last couple. What's the typical length of a, a voicemail? <laughs> I mean, to my good friends, it's you, it's Feeney, call me back. I don't need details about your day or your future plans. I want to know. If I want to know, I'll call you back. Some de details are cool, you know? Hey, game's at seven, meet for beers. I don't need to know. I don't want to hear about your kid's trip to Lincoln Center in New York City. Right? <laughs> Or do you ever sacrifice time for a deal, like a guy that does your taxes or paints your house, or they talk about their daughter's trip to Radio City? While you're on the clock. I'm trying to go back to an earlier joke, right? Or they talk about the Red Sox. See, I went back to the Red Sox. Yeah, these are very <laughs> loose, loose callbacks. You can't. Just, that's a callback. It's like it's a callback. You dude. can't just be like hinting in the general air. It's got to be like. Oh, it's got to be the exact. Like it's it's got to be very clear not just like remember i like referenced the red Sox <laughs> earlier it's got to be like this joke from earlier this joke the funny part of that joke is happening in this situation ah uh, okay. okay you know what i mean yep 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 Wait, how many voicemails are you getting a lot of details on your voicemails from your uh, friends one guy it was like two minutes so i had to bring so-and-so to college the other one went to lincoln center and saw a play and saw, and then 
you know, you she's can singing and going, call, <laughs> going to college on a scholarship. And we got, you know, I'm having <laughs> chicken tortellini for dinner. And, and if he were to text you, it would have just been, hey, call me. Right? <laughs> he gets me on the voicemail. It's like, then He's does it burn all the, all the does time? Does he keep up space in my voicemail? Is he blocking space for other voicemails? Because that was way too long. Are you good at deleting as no, soon as they come terrible. in? Terrible. You want to see something? Kind of. So I have 20,000 emails. <laughs> Yo, I got like 8,000. 20,000. 53. You got 146 texts. <laughs> 146 texts. That, dude, you're giving me anxiety. When I have eight, I'm like through the roof. Yeah, just 149 texts. Who's texting? From who? <laughs> Solo stove. <laughs> there, that's a callback. Callback. Back. Right yes. there. Yes. No wonder you don't get back to my texts ever. True. 20,000 right. emails. How many of those are just promotions? Spans, you know they have. Spam for days. They have services where they'll like unsubscribe for you and stuff. You might need that, I think. Let's shout them out. Do you I, know what it is? We'll no, put it on the I, website. I don't know. Right. There's several of them. You got to do your own research. You don't. You just shout everybody out. They need to shout do something. No, no, no. I was going to put it on the tag. I'm not. I do. What minute we talked about stuff. Okay. Sponsors. Shout outs. If something's like relevant of we, that we shout out during this conversation, I might put it in. Like Mark Kelly. How to donate to Mark Kelly will be put in here. Don't do it. Don't. Even if he's doing the greatest work for the state. Of, why did I donate to the Arizona senator? I don't know. I was just like, he's an astronaut. This will be cool. Never donate to any politician. They'll kill you. Your phone bill alone. All right. I got to finish this now. There's, we've got to painfully get through this. I'm We're sorry, almost done right. here. <laughs> Thank you for being patient and kind. Because if this wasn't taped, I'm sure you'd be shredding me right now. No, I'd probably be like, yeah, you should do that. That's it. It's ready to go. <laughs> that would be the mean thing to do. <laughs> Did sneezing take a new meaning or what? <laughs> That's kind of a one-liner right there. <laughs> I'm like putting myself out there. You're like a year oh. ago. Go it ahead. was scary, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, did sneezing take a new meaning or what? <laughs> COVID. Am I right? Am I right? Back in the day, ha, huh, germs, kid. Now kids got COVID, and it's like maybe with asymptomatic symptoms or at all. Asymptomatic. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay. I Are mean, you asymptomatic? <laughs> every comedian opened with this at COVID. Gaffigan, Sebastian, Chappelle. So I like had him put that in there. Yeah, the COVID stuff got worn out quick. Quick, very quick. Even like in everyday life. <laughs> oh yeah, you sneezing, stop and shop. Oh boy, that. Now you no might be cares. asked to leave. <laughs> now no one cares, but yeah, there was a time. <laughs> that robot's following you. You're like, is he testing my temperature? <laughs> oh, that was a good. All right, as long as I last. See, that's <laughs> this is a typical hangout with BJ Quagan. Well, that is just a funny like <laughs> thing to ask. Like, cause you're doing it in a in a like it's almost like a caricature of like an 80s comedian. You know what I mean? Like, am I right? <laughs> All right, last one, and then we're done here. Can you deep fry anything and not eat it? Snickers, Kool-Aid, butter, Oreos, ice cream, a pair of sneakers. See, that's the storytelling. As like the list goes on, they get more and more random and crazy. Yeah, you build. Or, or put it in a dumpling. Dumplings are the new fried dough. Dumplings are like the 2022 version. Or my daughter corrected me. It's like the 18th century, to be exact. Dumplings. Shout out to Bridget. You know, and this is my closer. Fried potato dough. Not fried potato. Fried potato dough. Then I was going to segue to pierogies. Then Poland. Then Madame Marie Curie. And then radium. No, see, yeah. I, see, I, can see, I can see these see jokes. The trajectory, yeah. <laughs> see the jokes. 
Pierogi, Poland, Madame Curie. How do you get radium. to radium? Because she, Madame Marie Curie, discovered radium. Right, but the joke. You want to hear the joke? How does the joke naturally get <laughs> to all? How does it touch on all? I haven't. This needs. Then I stopped here in this brain session, brainstorm oh, session. Yeah. yeah. So don't do any of that. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe yeah, just have Bridget write it. I think. Instead of butchering her, you know, her good content. Yeah. You ever have a soup dumpling? I think so. Where yeah. the rocket's broth in your, <laughs> down your throat and if you bite into it, catches you off guard, burns your back of your throat. Is it already in the soup it's and you there. catch it and spoon it out? No, no. Oh. It's in the dumpling. You bite it and the soup just... Where are you getting this dumpling from? It's like a big thing. Soup dumpling. Oh, wow. No, it's like a type one. of dumpling. There's soup inside of it. So it's, it's served to you on a plate, I'm saying. It yeah, looks like a dumpling. It looks like a steamed dumpling. And, oh, there's soup in it. And you, and you bite it, and there's a lot of broth going on. And uh, Piping hot. Yeah, you got to give it. It's like you can't pierce And you can't it. even blow on it. You can't even blow on it. <laughs> it's just surprised. No, it's just a dangerous food. It's like a gusher of with pain. lava inside yeah. of it. Trying to it's a death gusher. <laughs> and it just shoots right down your throat. <laughs> Oh, shout out to Dumplings Hot Basil, New Park. Good we spot. Go they oh, probably yeah. have soup dumplings. You want to go after them? Yeah, we'll go after right. them. I'll get you one. Soup dumplings. We'll burn our throats Let's together. See. Burn it. All right. We got another sponsor. These are going to be funny, too. Okay. We're all about laughing now because that was funny. You write that in crayon? <laughs> Wait, oh, you'll you get You write it. like an a absolute child. And well, I funny that you do. say that because this is, can I get to the bit? You jump in the gun. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Crazy Questions, sponsored by Donut Crazy, written by kids that may or may not have great handwriting. Thanks, BJ. Well, you know what? They're doing everything they should be doing then. Thanks, BJ. Maybe they write in Korean. But you do write like a child. No, my handwriting's true. terrible. Mine's worse, actually. All right. And I had them write their favorite jokes. So okay. we're going to have jokes and questions. Can I apologize to these children in person? Because I sure. feel very upset. You can buy, you know what will make them happy if you get this tattooed? I will. On your they arm. can pick it. They'll, they'll love it. <sighs> knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Why are you crying? <laughs> it's classic. It's classic, right? Do you like to sing? Yes. What school did you go to? East Green Bay High School. Do you know my dad, Keith Anglekey? You know Keith. Yeah. They call him something else, though. You I know, know Keith Anglekey. We used to play basketball yes. with Keith. Yes, yes. I have a son. He wanted to shout, shout out and say. It's weird how he knew, like he knew. I told I would him. Not, I told oh, him. I, told yeah, him. I was like, how did I he told know? Him. I told him. I'm like, he knows so he my wife. <laughs> he knows my wife. Well, Nicole went to school with him. Yeah. My wife graduated with him. Keith, he he's a busy baller. down low too. Oh, he's still He'll aggressive. He'll bully you around. He's still a Dennis Rodman type. Keith's a good dude, man. I Diving on the too. floor. Oh, yeah? Well, not with him, but we worked in the same, at the same office. Keith. Shout out to Keith. He, he'll, he'll listen. Do you play baseball? Yes. What's your favorite thing to do? In baseball or just in general? Bunt. What's your favorite book? That's an embarrassing question. I'm not a good do you like favorite. jokes? Yes. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did you want to become a comedian? I like making people laugh. What's your funniest joke? Ugh. What did one hot dog say to the other? Hey, Frank. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. It's not even mine. What, does it, what room does a ghost hate the most? Which room? The living room. Wow, that's good. This that's guy clever. told me a joke. One kid. <laughs> this is as a teacher. You don't know what kids will say, anything. You never know. So we're telling jokes. He waits till recess to tell me. He's like, this is my mom's favorite joke. So I'm like, all right. <clears throat> Pirate walks into a store with a steering wheel in his pants. The clerk goes, what? Why is there a steering wheel in your pants? 
<laughs> the pirate. The pirate, did I tell you the pirate? The pirate goes, they're driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Like you that catch off excellent. guard at recess. Luckily, no one. I was like, okay. <laughs> a child told you that? Yeah. That's amazing. It's his mom's favorite joke. Oh, That's so a good. good joke. That was great, right? That's a good joke. Got me off guard. Got me <laughs> laughing hard. I'm, I'm 100% using that. <laughs> BJ Quagan, what's your name? BJ Quagan. <laughs> what jokes do you tell? It's not great ones. You ever read this book? It's written by a comedian. The book with no pictures. No. Uh, what's his name? B.J. Novak. Novak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Classic book. It's, it has no pictures. That's the funniest book he's ever read. It's a really good book. He's like makes silly noises and. <clears throat> I think he came to Hartford actually and did like a book signing at the Mark Twain House. Oh, come a bunch on. Of CP people went a few years back. I would definitely went. What's a cat's favorite color? Green. Purple. Oh, I should have saw that. Coming. What's your favorite joke? Where do you work? Um, the Hartford. And my favorite joke is. Can we, uh, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite joke? Why are you Harry a comedian? Potter. What's your favorite movie? Oh man, I should. I don't. How do I not? I got a new favorite movie right now. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Brand. It's out really? now. Studio A two four A twenty four. Is it the Nicolas Cage movie? No, it's a uh, Michelle Yeoh. Um, Comedy? She, I think she's Malaysian. She's like one of the best martial arts actresses of all. Maybe the best. But it's not even about martial arts. But a little bit. Of it. She, it's incredible. Everyone should see it. Everybody. Comedy, it's, uh, drama, family. Weird. All right. That was too much information. No, that was cool. I'll check it out. I'll tag that. <laughs> you see that movie again? It's everything, everywhere, all at once. It's my favorite movie, and it's a new movie. Everywhere. Everything, everywhere, all at once. It's incredible. Incredible movie. Have you heard about the Nicolas Cage movie? Which one? Because he's like, made a lot of them. No, it's, it's, a, it's called like the Nicolas Cage oh, movie. Pig? It's about him. And it's like following his life. And I don't know. I heard about it. All right, I'll watch You it. like Marvel? Yeah. Doctor Strange? You're going to go do. see that? I saw Doctor Strange last night. You did? Yeah. Good? It was okay. Long? Yeah, it's like two hours something. A lot of characters. Yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot them. of characters. Most characters ever, right? In a Marvel movie. Characters that you really haven't seen before, but if you like comics, you know of them. Eternals? Any Eternals? I don't know if there's any Eternals in there. I don't think so. Spoiling. Throw one out that some random that I probably wouldn't know who that character. was in. Um, Fantastic Four in it. Yeah, Reed Richards, Mister Fantastic. Is in it? Professor X is in it. Uh, is it played by what's his name? Jean Luc Picard. Yes. Yes. That's like a big spoiler, though. Actually, like that's it's Ooh. kind of like the coolest part. Of oh, the movie, great! So. Thanks. I knew. Should... I knew that one. I read that. Oh, one. did you? <clears throat> I what didn't did, read it. What did one triangle say to the other triangle? Hypotenuse. <laughs> I don't know. You're a Q. <laughs> Pretty good, right? That's cute. Funniest joke. What one car say to the other car? Beep. You're driving me crazy. That's true. Would you rather tell a cat joke or a dog joke? Cat joke. What did one squirrel say to the other squirrel? Hi. Nuts. You're driving me nuts. There you go. Would you rather tell a snake joke or a lizard joke? Snake. Oh, do you have any pickup lines? <laughs> That's a good one. This is my no way. Right really, hundred percent. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just uh, talk about my friend who beat cancer twice. <laughs> if he's around, <laughs> I did have one pickup line. Like at, when I was real young, I was probably like thirteen. I was at Six Flags. I forget what it was. I forget like exactly what, but I remember. Because it was like older girls, like my, they, I was with older kids. They made me, made me go talk to them. I was like terrified, right? And uh, I think I said something like, "I was like, I lost my mom. Can I, can I just like follow you guys, the girls around for a while?" And she was like, "Is this the pickup line from hell?" <laughs> yeah, and I remember thinking, actually, yeah, it yeah, is. it is. It was. What do you call a cow with no limbs? Immobile. 
<laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Ground beef. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> I like that. Is Mr. Feeney funny? Yes. Cat's favorite color. Oh, why didn't the teddy bear eat dessert? Why not? He was stuffed. <laughs> Can I also say one thing? Of course. You gave me a list of like prep questions <laughs> and we haven't done one of them. And did all this work? You did your homework? Yeah. And it was just, no. Your job, we got to that. How do you know Feeney? We got to that. We did, yeah. I'm gonna follow up with this one, so get ready. Right okay. after this. Okay. Man, you, you wanna host? No. You wanna ask me the questions? I could ask you one of them. <laughs> what made you think it'll be fun to be a comedian? That's a good question. I like this. That's a really good question. <clears throat> I think um, having a lot of eyes and attention on you and, and there's like pressure that comes with that. The adrenaline rush of delivering and getting a pop. Mm. Kind of like I'm sure if you're a professional wrestler, your music hits if the if the crowd pops, right? Like that's the wrestling terminology. It is an insane adrenaline rush. Yeah. And and you've you've done a the lot of public speaking thing. thing. Yeah. So you've felt that. Oh man. And it is it's like a an insane addiction. Yeah. No, hundred percent. That's why I was like, I want to try this comedy thing. I gotta fine tune. You know, gotta yeah. put in the time and the effort. Yeah. I think I need to go back and reward a lot of these. Yeah. I mean, even maybe just start over. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> burn it. Get Bridget in there. Do you, know, you know that Google Drive you have it saved? Get a new email. <laughs> All the <them> megabytes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you rather read Captain Underpants or Dog Man? Captain Underpants for sure. Love He's great. Pilky. Isn't he great? That was out when I was a kid. You know? Really? Yeah. I grew up reading Captain Underpants. Jeez. Dragon gets bought. Dragon was like the first one he did. It was a big deal. He's been around that long? Long time, Dave Pilkey. Hope he's still alive. I don't know why I always go there. <laughs> I never saw the movies, though. The Captain Underpants movies. Weird Al does the opening intro music. Really? To the movie. They're coming out with Weird, Weird Al. Al movie, too. Yeah. So out with Daniel Radcliffe. Harry Potter is playing Weird Al. That's going to be great. Like him. And he looks, he looks like just him like, with a, a like a young Weird Al. I'm going to see that. I'm sure. going to see that, too. I won't see the Elvis biopic, but I will see the Weird Al. Who's doing the Elvis one? I don't know. Not Weird Too many it. biopics out, but a Weird We're Al. We're watching Weird Al. Yeah, for sure. He's like the only guy to have hits in like five straight decades. Greatest hits are... Top 10. And kind of like the really the first one to do parody. good parody like that. And a good dude. Yeah, like they wanted to, um, like someone in Michael Jackson's crew were like, listen, you can't have him doing this. And my MJ was like, no, we, he kind of pushed him along and encouraged it, which helped. That's awesome. Favorite color, favorite movie, favorite animal. Green, everything, everywhere, all at once. Favorite dessert. Any, any dessert really, pie, pie, any pie. Would you rather be an ant or a beetle? Maybe a beetle because they can fly. Knock knock. Who's there? Radio. Radium who? Radio not. Here I come. Fuji's. Boo! I'm gonna find you <laughs> in me. Not at all. That's it. How do you make a tissue dance? <clears throat> Put a little boogie in it. You got it. The funniest thing you saw on YouTube. Funniest thing on YouTube? <laughs> oh boy. This guy saw was a man slipping on ice. <laughs> and he kept losing <laughs> his balance and he smacks his face on the snow. Man, you're mean. People kids. getting hurt is funny on YouTube. Right? And before that, we had to watch America's Funniest Home Video oh, to see that. Still to this day. You still watch it? No, not to this day, but in college. <laughs> My roommates knew Sunday, 8 o'clock, Feeney's watching America's Funniest Home Videos. They had America's Funniest Home Videos when you were in college? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't Saget, but. Who was hosting America's It was. Uh, Rest in peace, Bob Saget. Oh, 
hero. Uh, what's his name? I don't know, but Saget was the OG. <clears throat> Best joke. How old are you? 32. Mr. Feeney is so funny. What do you like to do? Oh, doctor. Do you like Dr. Seuss? I do like Dr. Seuss. What's your favorite sport? Baseball. All right. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? What? Nothing. Just wave. I like that. <clears throat> what do I like to do? What do you like to do? Nothing. Nothing. Play video games with Eric Feeney. Yep. NBA Jam here at Wee Hot Roasting and Brewing. What's your record? 0-1 here. Yep. NHL. 0-1. What's your record here? <laughs> they have the Sega Genesis set up. Come here at 141. I, uh, gave, you the, I gave you a close game in, in Jam. NHL, I think you beat me by a few goals. But NBA Jam, we had a tight one the whole way. I know. I finally lost. Andy, this guy beat me. He broke my streak. So mad. I was Barkley and everything. He was Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning had like 50 points. Shoe and threes with Zell. Love Larry Johnson. And Larry Johnson. I so, love that combo. <clears throat> I was undefeated. I was like 30 and 0. So I will go and challenge anyone. He got lucky. I smacked on you. I'll smack on anyone else. smack. There. Who was I, Starks and Ewing? Yeah. So if you, anybody wants it in the NBA Jam here at We Have Roasting and Brewing, the challenge is out there. If you're not beating me by 30, you're not good at NBA Jam, I don't think. True. And you beat me by like four points. All right. Two more questions and we're wrapping up. Don't forget to watch at the end between two kegs. Favorite teacher. I've been a teacher for 18 years. Carl for a hundred percent. Oh, I think I meant that dude. Did you meet him? Did he go to your birthday or? Uh, maybe my graduation party. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the absolute best. It's like this Italian, hairy Italian dude from uh, Newark, New Jersey, or like orange somewhere around there like during the Nork riots but he uh and he was my brother's favorite teacher and that's how I met him I was in eighth grade and he was like all right he's like you're a little Lombardo you're Sammy's brother and he just like immediately started he if he if he liked you he would pick on you yeah that was like yeah. his you know old school kind of thing he'd like bully you it was funny I loved it you know yeah. but um you still in contact with him I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. I got to reach out. Sam has though. And I used to stay up with him even after college. Like we would go every once in a while. We would like go out to eat or something like that. But I think he moved to Florida. I got to reach out to him. Ultimately, what made the connection? Just the rapport, relationship, connection? Yeah. Like I just love the guy. I think he took a liking to me because he liked Sam. So like he kind of reached out first in a way. Um, but we had some, there's a lot of funny moments like he um i remember one time i got him i was like i was we were all someone was reading in class he's an english teacher and they're reading and there's like a pause or something and i just go like <laughs> and i'm like like sniffing like real loud and i'm like getting up making kind of a ruckus and he's like what is it what's the problem and i'm like it smells like up dog in here and he's like what the hell's up, dog? And I'm like, not much, bro. <laughs> Dude, and he took like a beat and he just bursted out laughing. Dude. He, I didn't get it, it at first. Him, it took me for a minute. It broke him. Up, dog? Yeah. What's up, dog? Ooh, I'm using that. But that killed him. Oh, yeah. I had a Mr. Ray Gorey, Willby High School, you know, thumb. Thumb to the rib, jab while you're bro, taking a test. How do that, dude? The old... Squeeze the collarbone yeah, trick. Yeah, you do that too. <laughs> Ray Gorey, old Italian. It's Italian guy. And Ray, Ray tatted up. He got an army tat that said Ray. And he's just like, come on, Feeney. You know, pluck my ears or something. Yep. And just, you know, cool. Probably been in hundreds of fights. Right? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I met that. Though. I, met, I definitely met that guy. He was cool. But Pops. then you did learn, right? Did you learn or just... Favorite, fun, entertaining, but also educational. I'm a, not a good learner. <laughs> so if I didn't, I would say, yeah, like he, he was a good teacher, but more, he was like an even better role model mentor. Like he, 
kind of like just from a morals and being like a, a good man perspective, like he was just such a good dude that I learned a lot from him more in that way, which is like almost more important because like you can, you can read books and academia on your own, you know, and, but you need a role, positive role models. True. Like good point. friends of Feeney. Friends of Feeney. Tatted up on his eye. Coming soon. <laughs> Five G's. Maybe they don't pick the location. <clears throat> No, maybe just. We'll, I think under under the arm. That's a painful area. Maybe, maybe on the head, my butt. Yeah. Calf. Favorite restaurant? Do you have a favorite restaurant? Oh my god! I don't have favorites of a lot of things. McDonald's. All right. That restaurant. Right. That's a good restaurant. Yeah, it's a classy. I like it. Mom and pop I, spot. And I don't go to the drive-through. I order. I sit down. Really? You make a night of it. Time. <laughs> date or no date. Usually alone. Solo? Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that off the air. So you're at McDonald's. Yeah. You can eat with four dinner guests. Anybody, dead or alive. Who are you eating with? Mike Tyson, for sure. Chris Farley. Mm -hmm. I love the Tyson pick, too. I think uh, Farley and Tyson are my, probably my top two. Mr. Rogers. Hey. I would put in there for sure. I don't know, maybe not at the same table. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It would be a weird. No, he'd be cool though. So he'd be cool with it, and they would love him. Obviously, everybody loves Mister Rogers. Um. Spoiler: I come out in old dirty bastard. Ooh, those are my four. Come on, yeah, dude. I said that already. Did you? Someone asked me. Really? I said ODB. From the Wu-Tang Clan. I think those are the four most interesting people, and I'm sorry they're all men. <laughs> and Mr. Rogers would hang. But I open the show. <clears throat> Number 50, I come out. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Did you? Put He's on, the greatest person to live. Put on the sweater. Take off the sneaker. You got to check out episode 50. It'll be out. His lesson, like, if you watch any episode of Mr. Rogers, it's like the most beautiful. Patient. It makes me cry. Slow, patient. It's insane. He's a good, good man. He raised me. He's yeah, he raised a lot of kids. Shout Episode out to 50. Mr. Rogers. Shout out to Mr. Old Dirty, huh? Old Dirty, Russell Jones, Big Baby Jesus, and Old Dirty, Iron Mike, and Chris Farley. Very I mean, those, those are certainly four that are up there. I feel bad there's not more women in there. My mom would be a fun mix in there, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, shout out. This is for a couple things I'd like to shout out. Mike. Isn't this beautiful? I got teacher appreciation was last week. So you got to reach out to what's his name again? Carl Ferrara. I got a letter from a former student. It meant a lot. So definitely reach out. Carl Ferrara. Ferraro? Ferrara. Ferrara. Boom. Be a good friend. That's awesome. Kind of come. <laughs> yep, don't say it. Yep. <laughs> don't say it. And then this one, we're moving on. Moving on. I thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Best you ever saw. I didn't have a room to fun edition. And then this one. Oh, that, man, these kids are like creative and artsy. This is a special award for being a good He's friend. Good friend. Well, That's my guy. This Keith Skid. Keith Skid made this awesome kid. Let's see the first one one more time. <laughs> so, all right, so start it out. It's a heart. And now there's a longer message. Pause. Pause. All right. Any closing remarks? With that being said. Um, art is a good thing, man. It's important. Laughing is good, too. Laughing is good. Jimmy V. Speech. Oh, incredible. Cry. Laugh, think. You watch that once a year? Oh my least? god, hundred percent. I showed the girls my daughters for the first time. It's moving. Crying in front of them. They're like, Dad, why are you crying? Don't you said you saw this a hundred times? I'm like, it felt different watching it with the girls. Like, yeah, you're gonna learn from this. I'm sharing this moment, this bond with you, Jimmy V. He was a good. Dude. <clears throat> oh my god, well, this, Dickie V is Dickie V. One of my apps. Like when he was getting emotional, when they were, everyone was cheering for him. Yeah, coming back from from battling cancer, and that was like just this past college season, and 
seeing him just like lose it, it was like, oh man, you're the best. Yeah. So laugh, cry, think. Think. And that's a full day. That's a full day. Sager has a really good one too. Stu Scott too. Stu. Yeah. So that same night, Bridget and I, I showed her Jimmy V, which led to Stu, which led to Sager. And then Dickie V's going to, he's going to do one soon, I think. He should get this year's. He deserves it. All right. Sorry. Closing remarks. Just in general or? (laughs) Say something. No, it, I'm, I hope everyone <laughs> gets a laugh like we do. And if you don't, I still got one. And I always enjoy talking with you. You definitely are like a little bro to me. Uh, you know, I've known you for a long time. It was great to sit down and chat with you. I'm supporting you any which way. You I want to thank you. You are a celebrity server at Rita's Italian Ice. And your rest of your CT crew came and served Ices for your half an hour. So you supported Friends of Feeney and volunteered your time. I want to thank you. It's the first and only time I'll ever be called a celebrity. <laughs> you rock, uh, you know, you rock all the swag that I give you. I do. You make me. But I made you put that. I'm like, yeah. He's like, he, this guy I'm, shows up wearing a Vermont shirt. I, well, like, I just, You're not repping Vermont. I love the state of Vermont. <laughs> On my podcast. Big, big Vermont fan. If you've ever heard of it or been there, I highly recommend it. No, we don't rep Vermont. Be a good <laughs> friend and wear the gear. Again, 50 was special. I will get that tattoo. If 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 people if you want to run something where it's like you need to hit a mark to donate to a good cause or something, I will one hundred percent get to be a good friend tattoo. I am not lying about that. You heard it here first. I love it. Got something. This is not gonna air but um in time, but Gastro Park, we're having Stanley from the office. So that fundraiser is gonna be good. But I think your tattoo fundraiser might be better. Probably not. <laughs> I'll just get a tattoo for, and it'll be like a hundred bucks to a good charity. True, true. But yes, this Wednesday, May eleventh, four to seven, Gastro Park. You get forty bucks to take a picture. Someday, I think you'll be out there, being able to sell photographs and and, and autographs. What do you think? How many years from now? Rodney Dangerfield didn't hit it big until forty plus forty. Julia Child didn't hit it big until 40 plus. Yeah, but she could cook. And, and she was like an electric performer. So Dangerfield. Like, yeah, they, yeah, but they both had talent. You should listen to this, uh, <laughs> What You Should Know is a podcast. I love that podcast. They do a Rodney the Dangerfield. Things you know. Yes. They do a Rodney Dangerfield episode. Really? Oh, so good. I'll check that out. So good. I'll put that on here. But I probably won't be out there, but that's all right. <clears throat> No, thank you for sitting down and chatting. Thank you for your support. Again, Between Two Kegs coming up next. Let us know what you think. Thank you, Owen. Thank you, Dave from Direct Line Media. Thank you, Cody from We Are Roasting and Brewing. Thank you to all our sponsors, The Fix IV, West Hartford Lock, Keating Agency Insurance. Keating Agency does our insurance here. Fix IV, shout out to everyone. And just continue watching. We're almost at 100 followers. 100? Yeah. Like 100? Yeah. All right. 95. I'll have to follow them. Yeah, please do. All right, on three, we'll say be a good friend. One, two, three. Be Be a a good good friend. friend. Cheney Talks with Friends. It's a podcast. We talk with wonderful people from the community. This guy breathes. It's BJ. He thinks he's funny. Stand-up comedy. You think you're funny. Yeah, here for Eric's uh, charity. Eric Feeney, founder and president of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that have heartbreak or tragedy. This guy is just a tragedy. What are we doing here? This is uh, Feeney between two ferns. Feeney between. Already, that's a copyrighted (laughs) show. Um, Only one of these plants are ferns. Between one fern? Can you between one fern? So you're stealing an idea. (laughs) Anyway, so I've interviewed, we do five questions with Feeney. I've done it at an Elmwood Makerspace event. I've done it at respectable places and I interviewed respectable people. And here you are. Dozens of clicks and views, I imagine. (laughs) Dozens. Feeney Talks Into the Wind is the name of the podcast. That sounds accurate. Does he have a face for radio? 
He has a face for radio, doesn't he? Why am I here? <laughs> Why are we doing this? CT hey, Improv. Is this even CT recording? CT Improv. It's like Feeney talks into the wind. It's CT on Improv into the wind. It's not what it is Where at is all. It? It's in Hartford, Wait, is it CT like as in Connecticut, CT? It's or a, is it like it's C? A, and T, pinkies it's out. It's a silly pun. That's terrible. S-E-A-T. Terrible. I didn't name it. T. You're insulting other people that aren't here right now. <laughs> not funny. This dude's not funny. Okay. Um, Eric has a gambling addiction. <laughs> Are you bad, ready for five questions gambling. for Feeney? We tried the fern bit. Zach Galifianakis. I just watched it. Steve Carell, I tried it. It was terrible. We're going five questions with Feeney. I do a podcast. We interview wonderful people. We tried something. Did we it work? Something. Kelly, did it work? I, we could have done Dave, did it work? We could have done it. Hunter, did it work? What did you notice? Did it go? It was terrible. Five questions with Feeney. That one's All right, fine. Five questions with me. Not a bad, it's like We're here. Game. BJ Quagan, CT comic, improv comic, stand up, roasted me on my 40th birthday. Did. Uh, I'm no one you need to know if you live <laughs> in Connecticut or anywhere else in the world, but I know this guy is great. How do you know Friends of Feeney? I know Friends of Feeney through Eric Feeney, who is my brother's brother in law. Uh, yeah, let's my brother-in-law, stepbrother, right here. All right, full brother, <laughs> half brother. You know stepbrothers, brother. Will Ferrell and uh, the other my dude. brother of blood <laughs> married a girl who is sisters with his wife. His brother hates him. He, his we're not on good terms. Taught him how to play baseball. My brother-in-law, Sammy, tied him to the garage oh. and, and, and hit fastballs at him <laughs> till he learned to take the only the dude ever hit a. Hit fastballs at people. Taught him how to catch home. by peppering them with fastballs. Sammy, you're a good big brother. This dude still can't catch. Anyway, five questions with Feeney going on too long. This guy Dave's texting. He doesn't care he's about text. us. He's like, I hate you guys. He's just looking five at like questions with he's Feeney. looking at movie reviews in theaters. Are you posting? Five questions with Feeney. Are you ready? What movies are in theaters now? Yeah, dude. <laughs> How many ways can I end this right now? Math. Camera blew up. <laughs> what types of math are there? <laughs> so, so, do you even math, bro? Sometimes. What's your superpower? Is that a magic? Is that a Feeny question? Or math? Here we go. Ready? Magic or math? Five questions with Feeny. Ready? Go. Five. Um, magic or math? What would I rather have? Yeah. Magic. Coffee or beer? Beer. Oranges or apples? Orange. Sparkling or flat? Flat. Would you rather have an extra finger or an extra toe? Toe. Three arms or three legs? I already got a third leg. <laughs> cut, cut that, cut that. Three arms. Three arms. He's got a kickstand. Dude's got a kickstand. Omar. It's not true. Anyway. Superpower, what would it be? Superpower. Mm, uh, to be able to die at any point. <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> starting now. No, I'm starting now. Superpower. Because of you, Feeny, thanks. <laughs> because of, uh, uh, superpower, I would choose, um, invisibility. Worst smell? <laughs> Mayonnaise. Best smell? Yeah. Fart. Worst sound? License and registration. <laughs> Fart. <laughs> Superman or Batman? Batman. LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. When you throw paper in the trash, what do you say? Kobe. Oh, Kobe. When you hit the door frame in a door, what do you say? <laughs> Boom shock. <laughs> Who won in the NBA Jam and Sega Genesis at Weeha Roasting and Brewing? Uh, me when I played Omar Saad. Omar's a bum? Our models be a good friend. How is Omar a good friend? Very good friend. He's a good friend because uh, he tries to pay for everything all the time uh, and uh, he'll compliment me regularly. Very charitable dude. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. Kind. 
He's the head of the uh, golf committee. Is he? Can you golf? Not well. What's better, your golf or your comedy? Because your comedy is terrible. Uh, still comedy. Golf is <laughs> one of the... funny. <laughs> I know I'm not funny. Who wor- this man? Worst golfer. The boo. You should see me golf. The boos will really rain in. Do we do extra finger, extra toe? Yeah. What would you do with it? (laughs) (laughs) What would I do with my extra toe? (laughs) Kids are here, dude. Kids are here. Yeah, no, I know. I'm thinking critically about it. Uh, Jump, pick things up. Collect scratch extra, your head. Collect extra foot shape. Put remote control, the cable that your dad pays for because you live in your dad's basement. Couple of months. Because you're a comedian. In between a places. A comedian. Dad's basement. Dude is broke. You know what BJ stands for? The B stands for broke. <laughs> or bum. All right, this has been Feeny Talks Between you know, Two Furries. I've had a good time. I'm glad you're I tried to be Zach Your fake charity is doing well. Failed. But you're a terrible person. Do not you're donate. Not funny. If you're gonna donate, it's all fake. <laughs> I've embezzled most of the money for him. Friend of me, a Freeney, right here. Dwight, he's the worst. I'm coming for you. It's my brother-in-law's brother-in-law, stepbrother's nephew. His dad's way better than him. His sister's better than him. You're the runt. You know how like dogs have runts? You ever seen a he's fat the runt? <laughs> he's the runt. <laughs> No, I've had a good time here. This is the only <laughs> shirt he owns. His dad says he wears it all day long. Fact or fiction? Fact. I will text your dad right now. Did you sleep in this shirt? Fiction. <laughs> I slept in the Wu-Tang hoodie. He has two hoodies. This is Wu-Tang. You know what for the children? Friends at Feeny are for the children, and Wu-Tang's for the children. That is true. You know who's a loser? This guy. You know who's not funny? This guy. Did I kill? I think I just killed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, people are going to see the real you for <laughs> sure. We're going to edit. I want to thank Dave from Direct Line Media. Dave I is thank the best, man. BG from CT Improv. Dave got killer sideburns. Dude, you see Elvis called. He wants his sideburns back. I like them. <laughs> I'll tell you what I would do with my extra toe. <laughs> With your extra toe, would you rub Dave's sideburns? I mean, if I didn't catch an assault charge, <laughs> yeah, I would. Uh, but I don't know if he'd be open to it. Favorite donut at Donut Crazy, Farmington Avenue. Donut Crazy sponsors Crazy Questions with Feeny. I got to go plain. <laughs> plain. <laughs> You don't want a snickerdoodle with an ice cream and a marshmallow I'm telling and sprinkles you they have the on most, a donut. They have the most killer avocado on top. Plain donut. Fruit, Fruit loop. donut is. Fruit loop. I've never gotten a donut from Donut Crazy. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> I do like donuts and I will be oh, there soon. He was a celebrity server at Rita's Italian Ice. Hardest he's ever worked. <laughs> he's never made more than twelve dollars an hour. You know why? Because he never lives worked an hour. in his dad's basement. You know where he used to live? In a van down by the river. This dude is a L7 square loser. And he teaches children. (laughs) This man teaches children. Friends of Feeding. We help children and families. This dude, born with a golden spoon, Dude, your can mom I, still makes your bed. Can I say something though? I'm proud of you. I love what you're doing. I love you. I think you're a great man. And I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and I love him. On three, be a good friend. One, two, three. Be, be a, a good, good friend. friend. <laughs>